offhand one would expect that the mere possession of power would automatically result in a cocky attitude toward the world and a receptivity to change. But it is not always so. The powerful can be as timid as the weak. What seems to count more than possession of instruments of power is faith in the future. Where power is not joined with faith in the future, it is used mainly to ward off the new and preserve the status quo. On the other hand, extravagant hope, even when not backed by actual power, is likely to generate a most reckless daring. For the hopeful can draw strength from the most ridiculous sources of power. A slogan, a word, a button. No faith is potent unless it is also faith in the future, unless it has a millennial component. So too, in effective doctrine, as well as being a source of power, it must also claim to be a key to the book of the future. Those who would transform a nation or the world cannot do so by breeding and captaining discontent or by demonstrating the reasonableness and desirability of the intended changes or by coercing people into a new way of life. They must know how to kindle and fan an extravagant hope. It matters not whether it be hope of a he heavenly kingdom or heaven on earth, of plunder and untold riches, of fabulous achievement or world domination. If the communists win Europe in a large part of the world, it will not be because they know how to stir up discontent or how to infect people with hatred, but because they know how to preach hope.